I'm going to start with a little word of prayer here. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this day. Lord, I want to thank you for your presence that I feel in this room already. And Lord, I am, want to welcome you. Lord, we've come together to fellowship with each other, but also draw closer to you. And Lord, I would pray that you would just inhabit this room. That Lord, you would open our hearts. That Lord, we might learn something new about you here today. Amen. And that Lord, we may leave here changed. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 A couple of years ago, a group got together to put on paper the values of Step 7. We had a number of different groups that we called together to try to flesh out what these values are. As you might imagine, several of them got onto the board relatively quickly there. What became Christ-centered spiritual growth? Love, truth prayer, study, just as fast as we could say it, went up onto the board. And then everything kind of slowed down a little bit as we began to really think about what is it that makes Step 7 a little bit different? What are the specific things that we value as a community here? One of the things that somebody offered up was the word community. They then went on to say that it was refreshing that how in their old way they shunned community. They shunned any kind of a fellowship. But now they embraced it. They eagerly looked forward to the next time that they could gather together with their friends and do something. The unfortunate thing is, folks, and I've looked back through my notes several times, I did not write down who it was who actually offered up the word community. And that's Shouldn't be surprising to most of you because while I can give you all the lyrics to Blinded by the Light, I can't remember why I went in the kitchen half the time, okay? <laughs> so today during potluck, please feel free to announce to the rest of the table that it was you who said we should have community as one of our values. I do remember though, later on that evening, going and taking a look at the definition of community to make sure that it really fit, that, that Step 7 was going to be able to embrace this as one of our values. What I read floored me that night, and I want to share with you the definition of the word community and see if it doesn't fit Step 7 as one of our values here. It's got three parts to it. Part 1 is a group sharing common characteristics or interests and are perceived as distinct in some respect from the larger society that it exists within. Think of us in the spectrum of the recovery community. We occupy a special niche. We are all about the spiritual component in recovery. We are all about a higher power. We've given that higher power a name, his name is Jesus. We occupy a special niche within the recovery community. And so I believe that we satisfy that particular one. The second part is a group whose members reside in a specific locality, share a common government, have a common cultural and historic heritage. We mentioned it before during the praise time. At the back of the room, folks, is a rock star from Step 7. His name's Bob Hansen. Bob Hansen was one of the core group. He was one of the very first early members and I would invite you during the days that he's here take him out for a meal go over to Motzenbacher where he and Ben where's Ben there he is are staying with us pick his brain have him tell you some stories about what it was like way back when step seven had four maybe five guys on a good night attending a small group and look around the room this morning have him tell you about young Frankie Talbert, pre-beard Frankie, okay, and what he was like the first few groups that he was in. Ask him why he became known as Big Bob and the little bitty feller became known as Blueberry Bob. Some of, some of them remember that one. Now, there's no need to ask him 
what young Tom Straley was like, okay? Because the man lies, all right? Just don't <laughs> worry about asking on that one at all. But he's been there, he's lived that. He can tell you about the historical heritage that we have. Earlier this week, my good buddy Norm called up and he said, hey, I'm not doing anything on Friday, can we pal around for a little bit? And I said, sure, we set up a long time. I showed up, he jumped in the pickup truck, he said, what are we gonna do today? What's on the agenda? I said, we're gonna move a heavy piece of furniture for somebody. He said, I wouldn't have thought we were doing anything else. <laughs> It's a cultural heritage that we have. We just go, we have fun, don't we, while we're doing it. Maybe eat a little bit afterwards. We have this cultural heritage. We have this historical heritage. We're a distinct group that shares these. It was the last one, though, that I wanted to focus in on today. Third part of it is a group of men and women leading a common life according to to a rule. Matt read our verse of the day. It's a prayer that Paul has for the folks in Rome, people that he hasn't even met yet. And yet he says, may the God who gives you endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity. Some versions say, become like-minded. You could also say, live a common life among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus. The thing that binds us together, that makes us unified and not uniform, is that we only have one rule here at Step 7. Hard and fast rule. We follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the seven years or so that I've been a part of Step 7, I have yet to have to sit down and counsel anyone. I've yet to have to have a difficult conversation with somebody because they were following Jesus just too closely. <laughs> We follow Jesus here at Step 7. It's what brings us together as a community. It is the rule that we follow here. Now some of you may be new to Step 7. And you may be wondering what this common life might look like. What are the elements that would be within this life so that I would know whether I want to be part of this community? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to share with you a couple of three that are pretty apparent to everyone who first comes in to us as a common life that we here at Step 7 get to live with each other as we follow Jesus as our rule. The first one is found over in the book of 1 John. So flip to your right if you're in Romans. Go almost all the way to the end of the book, right before Revelation. It's three little books of John. First John chapter 1, somebody with a black Bible holler out of page number when you get there. First John chapter 1. 863. Thanks, Bill. Somewhere around there. First John chapter 1. I'm going to start reading in verse 5. John writes, This is the message we have heard from him and now declare to you. God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. And verse 7, but if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from some of our sin. No. 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 This is all sin. Light, folks. As I look around the room, light is one of those things that we hold dear here at Step 7. I remember a lot of you on day one. Light would not have been the way I would have characterized you. Okay? Dark, gloomy, devoid of any light. Rarely am I reduced to tears. But I was one day when I met a young man by the name of Dallas. Dallas came to us and he was broken and he was so dark and so devoid of any light that I sat down and I talked with him, talked with the men in the house and I was like, I don't care what y'all say, he's moving in <laughs> just as soon as we can find a bed 
and I went out and I told his dad. I said, we're going to get him in. I've just got to figure out a bed. God will provide a bed. His dad said, I'll provide the bed if you'll take him in. It was almost a month <coughs> before I saw Dallas smile for the first time. We're used to seeing Dallas smile. We're used to seeing him bounce around here and do all kind of wonderful things. But I remember the first time I saw him smile. And I remembered how the light began to come into his life. And how it began to radiate throughout that entire house. And now our entire community. Light is one of the things that we hold dear. We also treasure the fellowship that this light brings with us. Not too long ago, a group of us got together. We went down to downtown Denver to the Denver Taco Festival. <laughs> it was just an outing. We had fun. There was a group of us. We went down there. We ate all kinds of street tacos. We watched Chihuahuas race. And who was the wrestler? Nacho Libre. <laughs> Nacho Libre. <laughs> we had the best time. On the, we took the light rail down there, was taking the light rail home, half the folks were asleep, and I was just looking around at the group that had met to simply go out there and enjoy something, some little facet of life here. And I thought, I didn't even know these folks just a few short years ago. Didn't realize how much light they were going to bring into my life. Simply being able to go and enjoy downtown Denver Taco Fest as a group. Second thing that you'll notice that is a key component within the common life that we all live here at Step 7 is found in the Gospel of John. So go back to your left to the Gospel of John. Fourth book in the New Testament. <coughs> Gospel of John chapter 10. And the folks who know me well know exactly where we're going. <laughs> My favorite verse in the entire Bible. Because not only do we have as a key component of this common life light, we also have abundant life as a key component of it. Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10. says, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now folks, there's churches all over America that the pastor would have to stop right there and explain to some of the good church people what that kind of lifestyle looks like. We're lucky here at Step 7, we need no introduction to steal, kill, and destroy. Most of us have been there, done that, and we have a t-shirt somewhere in the back of the closet to attest to that. It's the second half of the verse that I treasure. Jesus says, I have come that they, raise your hand if you're a they, that they may have life and have it to the full have it abundantly, and there's even a version out there that says exceedingly abundantly. Amen. I'm not sure how that all goes together, but I understand the concept. I think not too long ago, my good buddy Travis got a chance to go on vacation to California. He went with his ex, he went with his ex-in-laws, and he went with his two adorable little girls. If you'd have told Travis back in the day that he was going to treasure a time that he was going to spend with his then in-laws, he'd have told you probably not so much, okay? And yet he was so excited about being able to go. And I knew we had talked, he was going to be able to fulfill one of the bucket list items that he has. And so I was waiting. I kept watching Facebook, kept waiting for my text to kick off that he had done this. And finally, he was about three or four days into the 10-day deal, and he put it out there. He had finally seen the ocean. It was the very first time he had seen it. He had seen pictures of it, and he thought he had a mental concept of what the ocean was going to look like, you know, about how big and everything. He was blown away by what he saw. He had never witnessed anything like that. The man's never been out of the state of Colorado over here, okay, until he got a chance to go. And he saw the ocean for the first time. And he was trying to explain how big and how vast and how ever moving but never changing this ocean was. And I sent him back and I said, you know, I grew up on the Gulf Coast. Many times I would look out and I would get a small sense of just what God is like, how vast, how ever moving, never changing God is. And I got a woo that took it up a notch back. 
an abundant life, a life that we couldn't have even imagined back in the day, is now the life that we live here. We get a chance to live that common life and to share each other's victories during our praise and our thanksgiving time. I love whenever folks are going about and they're talking about being able to get back to loved ones or being able to do this or achieve that because it's that abundant life that's so common to all of us here. The very last one that I'm going to bring up is found again in the book of 1 John. We got life. We got life. Guess what the next one is? 1 John chapter 4. We're going to talk about love. First John chapter 4. I'm going to start in 16. It says, And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in Him. In this way, love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Because in this world, we are like Him. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear. So many of us, first time, somebody comes into the group, you can tell in their eyes, they will cut and run the first time anyone even looks at them, <laughs> smiles at them. They are just ready. They are so full of fear. So full of the fear of rejection. And yet by the end of the meeting or by the end of the church service, they're laughing, they're talking, they're making plans for the next time that we get together here. Perfect love. Driving out fear. Verse 19. Simply says, we love because He first loved us. I'm a huge fan of marking in your Bibles. I personalized this one. Verse 19 in my Bible says, Tom loves because he first loved Tom. I was having a little fun at Bob's expense. Bob doesn't lie. Bob will tell you I was a train wreck back in the day. <clears throat> the first few times I came to Step 7 meetings, I desperately needed a touch from God. And he sent the two angels. It took years, Bob. This is how slow I am. It took years before I realized that it wasn't just by coincidence that you sat on one side of me and Frankie sat on the other those first few meetings that we had. That y'all were doing that on purpose. To make sure I had the support. As I was preparing for this, I was going back through some emails with my family. <coughs> And I desperately needed somebody there with me. And Bob Hansen, and Frankie Talbert, and Evans, and Blueberry, and Jim, and we could go on. Were that group of angels for me? No. They looked like Hell's Angels, I understand. <laughs> but they were sent by God Himself. The reason I love today <coughs> is because I received that love. The reason that Travis loves today is because I was able to share God's love with him and he now turns around and shares it with others. That verse in 1 John says, what we have learned, we now share with you. God is light. God is life. God is love. Amen. I'm going to leave you with two questions here. <clears throat> Perhaps you're one of the first group that I talked about here earlier. You're still considering whether this is the right community for you. You now know a little bit more about us. I tell folks we put the fun in dysfunction. Okay? We are a great group. We are unified in following Christ. We are not uniform in any way, shape, or form of the definition. Yet we are unified because we follow Christ. And because we have seen its effect within our life. 
I would ask you to carefully consider what community you're a part of right now, and is it leading to life? Is it leading to light? Is it leading to love? And if not, come talk to somebody about becoming part of ours. If you're already a member of this community, let me leave you with this question. What are you doing to make the next Bob Hansen, the next Frankie Talbert, the next Tom Straley, next Travis? We could continue to go around the room here. What are you doing to bring light, bring life, and bring love into the new folks who are even now beginning to fill up ethos yet again? Carefully consider those. Come be part of this community. Come live this common life with us as we follow the one rule that we have, and that's to follow Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you again for this community that you have put together here, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you for the folks that you put in our life that give us encouragement, give us strength, that, Lord, teach us about you just by their daily walk. And, Lord, I ask that you would cause us to leave here with a commitment in our heart, Lord, to lead the next, to bring the next, to encourage the next, so that this community continues to grow and that your body continues to strengthen. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.